Welcome back everybody to another episode of my R2 Builds. In this episode we're going to look at the inside of the dome. I've got all of the panels hooked up to servos and we're going to see how they, they operate the, the panels and as well as the sequences that are controlled with a Maestro microcontroller. I've also powered the whole thing up using 5 volts um, from a buck converter. So let's head over to the dome and check it out. All right, here's the inside of my dome. Let's check out these panels and how they operate. It's getting kind of busy in here already with the wiring, but uh, that'll be uh, taken care of shortly once we get uh, everything else installed in here. So let's just take a look at, uh, say, Pi panel number one. It's set up, we've got a servo, it's uh, captive studded into the dome. I've got the spring mechanism in, the servo saver, uh, with the arm going to a panel. So that's how it operates. And uh, everything's labeled here. And then it goes to a spool, uh, which takes up the extra um, wiring from each servo. So once you have all the wiring in there, you just have to plug in the wiring that goes to the maestro so that way you can replace a servo pretty easily you just unscrew it from here um, pop the wiring out of there and then plug in the new one and wire it up to the maestro so that's uh, basically how they all work and let's just go around and take a look at uh, all of the panels so we've got pi panel number one right here then we have pi panel two three is the hollow projector so there's nothing there then there's four, five, and six. And then as far as the dome panels go, we've got three in a row here, one, two, and three. These are all the medium mounts, and these ones are all identical. And then over here we have panel number four, it's a little bit larger, so this is called a large panel A, and that's how that operates. Obviously none of these have the the, the fronts on them yet because I don't have the outer dome on. And then we have panel seven is a little bit larger than that, so that's large B. And then way over here, we have uh, pi panel number 10. It's the biggest one. And it is um, large C. And then over here, we have a couple smaller ones. This is the small hinge and it's on panel number 11 and then over here was supposed to be the smallest but um, because of my setup with my servo spools and my radar eye electronics that are going to go in there the smallest wouldn't fit properly so I just made another small one so these two are identical but I extended the arm for this a little bit longer so that everything can fit in here properly so that's how they're all mounted in. They all seem to be working. They've all been adjusted. Uh, and then I ran through a few sequences with my Maestro to make sure that the minimum and maximum settings were all done for these panels so far. I'll probably have to tweak that a little bit later on. So this is my Maestro. They've got, I've got all the panels connected to it. It's sitting on a 3D printed base that I made that's used that's stuck down using 3M tape. So this is the tape that I used. It works really well, and that way I can remove it if I have to. But if I have to take the Meister out, uh, there's just a screw um, right over here, and then one on the other side, and uh, I can pop that out if I need to. And uh, these are guides that I'm I've made. I've 3D printed these. They're they're they come in one, two, three, or four. I just design these up in fusion. They're gonna be painted and then stuck down so that all this wiring will be better managed. And um, they just lead to all of the servos, but as well as the serial connection and power. So speaking of power, here's how I'm powering it up. I'm gonna have 18 volts coming in from my Milwaukee uh, tool battery. And then it's gonna go to this buck converter that converts the 18 volts to 5 volts and then I just made this 
terminal um, block here. It's a serial bus actually for five volts. And I, it's just some terminal blocks on a perforated board. I 3D printed a mount for that as well as that. It's got a slate bevel on it, so it's stuck down on there. And then I have screws that attach it in case I have to pop it off. And then I used my Cricut to make some stickers to show positive and negative. So there's four ports on that side, four on this side, and I've already got one going to my Maestro here with some frail connectors. And it just goes all the way down here and plugs into my Maestro. So I'm powering the Maestro and the servos with five volts because I've put a jumper across here. This little block here is a jumper wire. So that allows you to use the same five volts to power the servos as well as the microcontroller. So uh, that's my setup so far. Uh, for this episode anyways, I'm going to be adding all of the hollow projectors and the other electronics in my next episode. But for now, let's uh, power this up and check out some sequences. Let's take a look at the Maestro Control Center before we see the panels functioning. I just want to show you my setup so far. I have all of the servos um, labeled here from 0 to 12. I've got um, from 0 to 4 are my Pi panels and then the other pa panels are all the way up to 12. So I have room for five more, which I'll probably be using uh, eventually. These are the sliders. They're all set to the home positions. These three sliders are in the opposite um, location of these ones because the servo horn comes out on the other side on those ones so that they fit properly in the dome. So that's why they're like that. And I can move these sliders along and uh, open and close my panels when I need to. Let's take a look at the channel settings. So here's where you can input a lot of information. Uh, you first you set them all to servos. Uh, then you can set their minimum and maximum positions, which I'll eventually do um, to make sure that they stay within that range, never um, leave that. I did activate the go to, so the go to means that when the maestro is turned on, all of the servos will go to whatever you tell it to right here. So I've already set that up. These are basically their home positions. And then I came up with three sequences uh, that will just demonstrate the panel movements. So. This one here just opens the first panel, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, all the way up to the last one, and then they all close in like manner. Then for sequence two, very easy. They just all open at the same time, and then they all close. And that's a good way to kind of test, see how much current you're drawing as well. So I had them open, check my current draw, and then they all close. So I kind of know if I have the right kind of buck converter. And then uh, sequence two will open and close the first one, open and close the second one, and so on and so on, all the way up to the last one. So what we're going to do now is uh, head over to the dome and watch these three sequences in operation. Hey, thanks for watching another episode of my R2 build. It's been a while, but it's slowly coming together. Uh, remember, you don't have to create things the way I've done it or other people have done it. I couldn't have finished what I've done so far without all the help of a lot of people. Sometimes I venture off and I make my own parts and my own designs. I'm doing more and more of that lately. And I know you can probably do that too. So trust yourself, uh, have fun with it. And uh, God bless you. Stick around for our thought for today. We'll see you real soon.